Okay, let's talk now for a moment about where we left off, which is this adjacency matrix. And we said that the adjacency matrix has some good properties and it has some bad properties. Just as a quick review, please discuss with the person next to you what's good about it and what's bad about it. Okay, who wants to tell me what's good about them, what's bad about them? Mr. F, sorry, what do you think, sir? What's good about it, what's bad about it? It takes a lot of space. That's what's bad about it. What's good about it? Um, so. so both questions we typically ask for graphs, the speed is really good on both of them. What are the two questions we typically ask on graphs? Mr. Frandovic, can you name one question we typically ask, sir? Uh, speed of... So we might give it a particular note and say, what are the edges that you have? That would be one. What's the other question we ask? Yes, sir. Are two nodes connected? Are two nodes connected by an edge? So those are the two operations that we want reasonable performance for. Does this give good performance for both of those questions? It does. The memory thing, though, is a real hang up. And we discussed how in a Facebook friendship app, this would not work because we'd have a billion rows by billion rows. That's petabytes of memory. It's just not practical, especially since it'll be sparse matrix. There'll only be a few ones to indicate the friendship. So then the next question arises, can we do better than this? So let's look at this particular representation right here. Now, I haven't shown the other list that comes along with this, which translates from the node names over to the node indexes. So this might be node zero, maybe that's node one, node two, like that. There's gonna be another list here that does that translation. We'll put that aside for a second. Let's look over here and assume that these are the ref node reference numbers and somehow we've managed to map the node names to the reference numbers. And here, I want you to try and figure out with your friend, what do these boxes represent? And is this a better representation than this one? We're gonna talk a little bit about how we would do this practically in code. Then we're gonna compare this representation to the adjacency matrix and talk a little bit about what's good about one versus the other, et cetera. This is called the adjacency list representation. It's the last one we'll study. It's the most complicated one. Right now, though, I just need to understand what do these boxes represent? It's, like that, it's symmetrical if the graph is undirected, that's right. Oh, okay. But if it's different if it's directed. If it's directed, then yeah. Yeah. you have a from and a from to. Just like a, Wasn't your quiz that was, have that? Yeah. 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 I was okay. So what I want to know now is what do these cells represent? Yes, so what do they represent? Are uh, they all the indices? They're all the indices of what? Oh, well, so for zero, No, they're not the indices. Right. It's, oh, wait. It's saying it's connected to 1, 2, and 3, meaning B, C, and D. So it's just saying the, the nodes that it's connected to, but not uh, the Right. It, it has the nodes that it's connected to. You see that, right? The nodes that it's connected to. And furthermore, um, it... it Right now, we have the nodes that it's connected to. We have a weighted graph here. Uh, if we wanted to include the weights, can you see how we would modify this to also include the weight information? Please discuss that with your partner now. Could we just replace these with the weights? No, no that's not going to work. List of pairs. It would be list of pairs then. See that, right? It would be the node number that it's the edge with and the weight that in that direction. Yes, sir. Would these pairs be like arrays or objects? How well, we we're going to talk about that right now. Let's go back to the simple graph example. Forget that the weights are here, right? Just imagine it's a simple graph. And now we want to know how would we implement something like this? Now, the first thought you might have is we could build a two-dimensional matrix and Java, for example, allows you to have a, what's called a jagged array where some of the rows are of different size than other ones, right? Alternatively, we could use individual arrays for each of these. But both of those applications or implementations have a fatal flaw. What would be the fatal flaw of using arrays here? Think about the different types of graphs we could have and what if it's not static? Yes, sir. They're not resizable. They're not resizable. And when will that cause us a problem? When we start changing data. When we add an edge or when we add or delete a node, can you see that we would have to create these matrices all over again and copy them over and recreate them? And that would be a real pain. So what we need instead of having matrices here or arrays is we need some sort of more flexible list that can grow and shrink. Does anybody have any ideas? Array list. We could use an array list. 
But I think I mentioned to you that when we grow and shrink an array list, it's really got an array behind it and it just kind of hides the difficulty from you, but it's still really slow in terms of being able to work because it's got the same underlying issue as the array. Yes. We can use a link list. So here, each single uh, node here, for example, let's say A happens to be represented by the index zero, and you can see it's connected to B, C, and D. We could have this connected together using a link list. Now, what would be the downside of using a link list here? Think now about performance. How would we, first of all, let, let's ask the two questions that we often ask of graphs. Let's say I wanted to know all the nodes that were connected to node number five. What would be the performance in that situation of using a link list? So how many edges can node number five have? Can it have n square edges? It can have n edges. It can have n edges. But you can take n so, so here, if we were asking how many edges connected to a particular node, we would just have to parse this list once. You agree, right? Mm -hmm. And what would be the maximum size of that list, potentially? Uh, that is correct, sir. It would be n minus 1. Very good. So you can see that for that particular question, the big O of finding how many or what edges are connected to, sorry, what nodes are connected to a given node would have performance of O of n or O of V, whichever way you want to call it. The issue arises in this implementation with the other question. We want to know if two edges are connected or not. We want to know, let's say, we want to know if five and four are connected. What's going to be the operating efficiency of that particular operation? What will we have to do to the list? We want to know if five and four have an edge. What are we going to need to do? Mr. Morris, five, sir, what do you think? We want to know if five has a connection to four. What are we going to have to do? Check. No, we only need to check one of them because it's a simple graph. Let's say we check this one. What will be the performance if this is a linked list, if we have to search it? It'll be O of N. Now, I have a more interesting question for you. Instead of using a linked list, are there other possibilities that you've learned already that might speed up this search. How could we replace the linked list with something more sophisticated that would make the performance of that second question improve? Please discuss with your partner. I'll tell you right now, I can think of at least two other possibilities. There might be more. Okay, does anybody have a suggestion for how we could replace this linked list with something else that might give us some speedier searches? Uh, can you suggest a different data structure other than a linked list that might be speedier? We could use a set. The set will be hashed typically, and that will allow us to figure out, for example, if there's a particular number, we could just use the contains method. And would we be able to iterate through the set? Yes, we would. So we would be able to write down all the nodes that are connected to a particular node. So a set would be a good possibility. Once again, it would be slightly more complicated than a linked list, but not that much more. What's another possibility? I think a binary search tree might work here also. We could store these in a binary search tree so we wouldn't have to keep them always sorted. We could just add more to the tree as we go. And then that would allow us to reduce the search time from O of N down to what? Who remembers? Yes, sir. O of log N. It would be O of log N then. Once again, it would increase the complexity a little bit, but we could do that. However, most of the implementations I've seen for adjacency lists don't do that. They just use a simple linked list and they hope that it's a fairly sparse graph. Now, I need you to understand one thing here. What will this adjacency list look like for a complete graph? If we had a complete graph, then this adjacency list would look an awful lot like something we've studied earlier. What would that be? Imagine that every single node had a connection to every other node or close to it. So these rows are starting to really grow now. Eventually, it'll start to look like what? Mr. Orspaev? It'll start to look like this one. So as this list starts to fill up, as this list starts to fill up with more and more information in each row, this list will start to approach this implementation. So now, let's look at these side by side and try to understand why we might prefer this list implementation, sorry, this graph implementation to this one. 
We already said that for looking up the items that are connected to a particular node, we just need to parse a particular row and write it, similar to what we do here. But the advantage that we get is on the space side, here you can see we're storing which nodes are connected, but we're also storing which nodes are not connected. Here, we're only storing which nodes are connected. Now, as I mentioned to you before, if the graph is extremely dense, lots of edges, then these two will begin to approach each other in terms of memory usage. But if we have sparse matrix, and most large graphs in the real world are sparse, meaning that the number of edges is way less than the theoretical maximum of V square, then you can see that this is gonna be a much more memory efficient algorithm than this one. Do you think that this would be a good way to store friendship on Facebook, for example? It would be, because you can see here, like Mr. Sarkar, if he was user number five, he would only have like 200 entries here instead of a billion. He's only got like 200 friends. So it would be a much more efficient way of representing a sparse graph. I, I, I believe this is pretty much it, sir, because as I mentioned to you that those three are the most popular ways I know of to represent graphs. So you can see that there's gonna be some inefficiency here overall, because even this is, as you probably hinted at, is not perfect. But this I think is about as good as it gets.